Ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues and listeners, here we are. We've got another podcast session and I'm really, really pleased to introduce uh, Claire Summers, who's the business director of DBD Communications. So, Claire, thank you very much for coming on. It's a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Good, good, good. And the reason I say it's a great pleasure is because obviously I can't remember now, but it must be it must be seven, eight, maybe even longer. Um, we had your dad on. Yeah. And um, and your dad was mentioning about how the business was transitioning and that, you know, he had um, he had somebody that he'd earmarked to sort of take over the business and uh, yeah. and move into that. And obviously that person isn't available today. So we're speaking to you. <laughs> yeah, no, they had other other uh, plans today. No, no, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. It, he, he spoke about you not only like a father does about their daughter, but with such pride. And the fact that he was so confident that all of the all of the DNA and all of the history and everything of the business that he built up, he was so confident to be handing that over to you. So I think that's a great accolade. Yeah. And um, your old man, he's a he's a good, good old sort. So he loves his rugby, ex-military, yeah. Remy, yeah. and he's uh, you know, he's a man who who can socialize very well. Yes, definitely. I'd agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, so for him to say the, the the things he did about you, I think you should be so, so, so proud yourself. Oh, thank you. So with that in play, let's now, let me ask you, and, and just for people who, who, who may not have listened or haven't remembered, what what does DBD Communications do and what are your um, core responsibilities? So we, DBD, we are a communications company, essentially, yep. and that covers a a wide spectrum of different products and solutions. Um, we're communication specialists, and I had a company briefing a couple of weeks ago just to remind all our staff, really what we do is we specialize in communication solutions. Yeah. And we're really trying to get through to our clients and our customers at the moment how we're a solution provider. So any, any solution needed within that RF and microwave spectrum we've got engineers and, and you know I'm not an engineer but I have a specialist team behind me that yeah. can solve and solve problems and create solutions for clients so that's essentially what we are but within that where we're spe where we have specialists in success and um, we we deal in the aviation sector so that's so that's obviously why, why I'm talking to you and we have a product that can support our, you know our our key product and our lead product is our Minerva Air, which is our yep. pushback system. So that's a, our pushback system that will provide wireless, short range wireless communications. So to allow in that communication, but with freedom of movement around the aircraft while you're pushing back aircraft. But that technology and that solution, it can also be used in lots of different applications and ground handling. So you can use it um, when you're towing, de-icing, there's lots of, you know, we get presented with scenario we can support with creating, yep. how can you communicate in the best way? How can you communicate effectively? Okay. So that's really so, next. Uh, sorry, can I just ask you something? So, so for those people that have been sitting on aircraft looking out the window yeah. and they're fascinated with what happens on the ramp, when they see, when they see the pushback of the aircraft, they were, or they, they've been used to seeing people with the, the cable hanging out yes. of the aircraft and the headphones on the so yeah. basically this replaces that yeah it's and it gives the same direct contact and communication with the cockpit and with any anywhere else but it doesn't need to be hooked up to the equipment which is why you're saying they can move around and they see much more and it's much well i, I would imagine it's probably safer as well yeah, exactly. You've got the safety, the safety improvements, um, which is why the, the original product is transitioned out of rail, um, which I can sort of touch base on in a second. But, you know, it gives you that that freedom of movement, which is safer. But, you know, you, you can also get the, the possibilities with it. You know, that headset can then also be linked to other people around the aircraft. Yep. So you can have multi-user options. So it's not a one product. Here's the solution. Here's the box you know, get on with it sort of thing. There's is what do you need? And yeah. then the 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 system can be configured with the different products we've got to, to suit the need really. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so that's that covers the, the situational awareness around a piece of equipment. Yeah. 
and then and and obviously for aircraft turnaround times and efficiency is so important but one of the most important things now is the safety so under sms and and uh, you know human factor issues i would imagine this is so so beneficial and especially as you said if it's if it can be hooked up to some other access then you've got you've got more eyes around what's going on so yeah. you've got less chance of causing damage yeah, and it, it, there's there's lots of things around. There's there's the safety in you know being able to communicate at that time. You've got um, safety in you know incident. So some of the stuff we're doing in rail at the moment is looking at you know recording devices so they can do investigations on incidents, lessons learned, things like that. Yeah. So there's lots of ways comms can support safety and make sure um, not only are we safe while we're doing the task, but how are we you know, how can we learn for the future? How can we change things, do things differently, make things more efficient, safer, um, and just an all-rounder experience, really? Yeah, no, brilliant. Now, you've, you've been producing um, manufacturing equipment since 2002. Yeah. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, just to go back for a little bit of history now. Back in 2009, um, you had the duplex communication, and that was used for network rail when they were doing trackside works. Yes. Which again yeah, well, is... we started the product um, was developed and we started trialing and we got our um, product acceptance so that it was being at, used on active live jobs jobs after trials in 2011. Um, so we're almost 10 years sort of supplying that market with this product for 10 years now. So yeah, and that and that is a hugely dangerous. Um, scenario. I can remember again, like you know, sitting on a speeding train and then whizzing past. And you see these guys, you know, so close and you think, my God, even even with the wind, you know, or being sucked in or whatever. So I would yeah, imagine yeah. it's so, so yeah. useful. Yeah, definitely. It's one of the I know I don't have the exact figures, but I know it's significantly reduced injuries. And I, I don't I haven't personally heard of any fatalities with on track plants so the plant machinery where they use our equipment. So um, which which is great, really, because actually above all else if if it's improved safety and saved lives and prevented injury then that that's got to be more important than anything else oh hugely hugely so then with the with the transition or with the 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 the, the opportunity to adapt and move across into the aviation side mm -hmm. how did that come about well i think it was david looking at so my dad looking at new um opportunities because we you know we are as a business all about diversification and yeah. part of the reason why we've remained a, a little bit more stable is perhaps some of our, our colleagues and friends in air you know in, in the recent in the last year but we, he looked at diversification so they um needed to find another market we know you know being solely reliant on one market it's not healthy for the business started yeah. to look around at where the product could be adapted and where there's an application for it and um, started to investigate you know the, the ground handling um, environment and found that it was a, a pretty good match and the fact any any comms that are using something wired there's there's naturally a need to disconnect that so any industry where you can see that they're used that they, they could perhaps move forward and improve efficiencies and that sort of thing there's an opportunity there and we found that so then we obviously started upon developing the product finessing the product and when i came on board in 2016 my background's project management so i then took and um, the product we had and then created a program of product developments back in 2016 to finesse our products develop new products so that we've got a selection of products suitable for that market sector Okay. And and then that's you know, and, and we grew from there quite quickly, to be honest, and um, in the first couple of years, quite rapidly. Okay, that's 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 brilliant. So obviously there was an opportunity there. Now with that, and uh, having spent probably for forty odd years around aviation, no matter what innovation or what product comes on board, if you don't give the correct training and there isn't the correct advice and guidance or coaching whether it be for installation or whether it be just for how to use and, and also to, to refer back to if there's a particular problem, you also, you also specialize in that. So the, the aftercare and also the, uh, the sales care 
of all the products and and helping the employees and the staff yeah uh, that's right. climatize to it yeah yeah that's right and particularly you know that's always been core at what we do and actually it's one of our usps that any any client can call us up afterwards and we'll give over the phone technical support you know yeah. that that's just that's no cost that's free of charge just the, you know, there's no hidden extras there um that's always been part of what we do but there's been a little bit of a focus and I, I have actually been working with our own marketing um, support here on how we can, especially this year, how we can get that training. How can we get that those messages out? Because where before we might be doing a, a business trip and we pop in somewhere and we'd see somebody give a bit of training, that's taken away a little bit from us now. But So how are we going to support our existing clients? So, you know, we're working on um, YouTube videos, product demonstrations, things like that. It's just looking at our whole service and support element. And, and that was the base, if you like. That was the foundation. And then we've then been looking at how do we build on that with those customers that may want extra support packages? What extra service packages can we give them? What um, you know, what training offers can we can we offer up? That sort of thing, really. So yeah, we we've definitely and we've got experience in construction in giving that radio training and programs and things like that as well. So yeah, it's a big it's, it's a big opportunity, isn't it? If it's if it's done right, yeah. And I think most people most people are now getting a little bit tired. You know, Zoom Zoom and all the other platforms were fantastic to start with, and now now people are craving to get in front of people again and yeah, this and need interact. isn't there. Yeah, but it will still it will still be a major factor, and and anybody who does it does it well, I think it's going to be very very successful and very useful, because that 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 rapid access is something that's so important. And I know you you guys also offer twenty four hour phone support, but yeah, there's so many things that could be available to people, you know, like a pick and mix or a search, and then they can see it straightforward and nice and simple. And I think the most important thing for people is to understand why something's there, not what you have to do and when you do it and where, et cetera, but why are you doing it? So it's always being done correctly. Yeah, definitely. I think that's always important when I know myself, if I am, I'm, I'm very, I need to know why I'm doing it. If I don't know why, you know, you're not invested in it, are you as much? So. Exactly. And I think another positive, and I, I, I remember speaking to dad about it was the fact that, you know, all of your products, you know, you provide free demos and even trial periods as well. So yeah. I think that's a great, um, it, it says how confident you are in your product that you allow. Yeah, that. definitely. And I'd be honest, even at this time, you know, we, we can't get, you know, we are restricted. We can't get out and see people and do those trials. We're offering, we'll just send the product through through a courier. You know, we and do a, a you know, back to Zoom or, you know, yeah. to do a demo or something like that. But, you know, we'll, we'll work around and support where we need to. Um, because we, we've got to adapt, really, haven't we? Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's brilliant. Now, you you've also got key worker status because of the network rail, so yes, you're able to keep you know to keep your guys um, actively involved as well, which is so important. Yeah. What impact has this you know last seven eight months had on on your business? Um, I think like any any other business, we it, it's had a significant impact. We're very fortunate that we. We are um, in multiple markets. Like I said, we're communication specialists. So we deal in various industries and some of our industries have continued working throughout. So like I say, rail infrastructure, you know, the, the railway maintenance yeah. needed to be done. So quite early, you know, within the first week or two in March of lockdown, yeah. we were identified as a key supplier to network rail. So we've, you know, we, our, our staff have had to, you know, they've done a great job. They've continued working the whole way through and all credit to them. You know, when everybody else was sort of quite worried, we were all quite concerned in the beginning. You know, we didn't know how serious, how, you know, this disease was, you know, we, we had little knowledge about it and they still, you know, turned up for work. Like they weren't at home. They had to come in, they had to go out on sites. They're dealing with, you know, we had to put additional cleaning practices in, so change of process within a few days yeah. of, of cleaning practices because of the, the mic and where that might have been and, you know, the, the risks involved in that. So although it may not seem it, you know, the product that we're dealing with, that we rent out and we get back, is, is high risk, you know, it's on somebody's head face, you know, and, and they're having to then, you know, they've got that fear and adapt to the working practices. But they did a great job and, and they got... 
you know, they, they got through it. We, we had some reductions on the way, you know, obviously one of our key markets wasn't moving, you know, yeah. you guys. It, so is. so we, we do have a significantly less um, staff than what we did. We lost our colleagues along the way. So, and um, through various reasons um, and, and yeah, it, it was difficult for everybody, but I think the positives out of it is it's brought us all together. I think it's brought us closer. I think it's sort of like brought us back to that family culture, I think. Yeah. There's yeah. always that family culture of our of our business, but it really feels like it's it's come back and not only us, the family, you know, four members of the company are family, but everybody else, it feels like they're sort of friends family again. So it's quite nice that everybody's pulled together and, and they've and we've got through that really. Um so yeah, yeah, no, it's a, it's a yeah, it, it's a strange phenomenon, isn't it? It's like yeah. the old Billy Ocean, you know, when the tough get going. Yeah, it's, it's I think a, we've looked at ourselves differently as well. And I, you know, we've taken it as an opportunity to look at, I think, as everybody has, how we do things. Yeah. How do we operate? How can we be more efficient? You know, what? Um, even ourselves, we're looking at technology and how we can make things more efficient internally. Um, whether that be you know with, with automated systems for all the processes you know so, so even looking inward at ourselves and going how do we use this as an opportunity to reset and i think a lot of industries almost every industry that i i i talk to they're all saying the same thing how do we make it better how do we reset looking at technology you know how do we make things automated all of that stuff sort of things they it's interesting how they comment again uh, across most market sectors yeah no it is isn't it and and getting back to to billy ocean was probably before your time but when the tough gets going you know the going get tough and things change yeah. and you know so so many decades or it takes decades to have such big change and now all of a sudden what was taking decades is now being done in six months seven months and things yeah. are speeding up so for the future and once we get out of this and now that the vaccines are starting to, yeah. you know, to come to the fore please god yeah. um, you know everything's going to be moving forward so much more because of the way people have adapted the agility the resilience and also the focus on on business sustainability so yes. all that legacy of waste it, it almost gives businesses a, a chance to reboot and you know reset and refocus which is um you know it's not not yeah. not necessarily a bad thing as long as everybody still cares for the people that have been displaced you know from their jobs because yeah. this is no fault of theirs at all it's a terrible no thing. no and, and that's and you know some of uh, you know some of our staff that you know aren't aren't here because it the new structure didn't work and things like that and it and it's so sad because you're losing colleagues that are not you know that are great at their jobs and i, I'm, yeah. I know it's probably the same in, in aviation but it, it's just the situation is just unfortunate and yeah um, no, it's terrible. Yeah. Now, something that would have that something that I would think of if I was if I was on site. Um, so, if I received the mic or the ear muffs or sorry, the mic muffs or the um, the ear covers, I'd be thinking, you know, who's who's used these before, etc. So, I'd want to see them and actually peel them out of the package myself, and then yeah. put them on. You know, so a little bit like the sterilized earphones that you get on the aircraft when you're, yeah. you're listening to so i'm assuming that's changed things for you guys as well yeah so we you know we put in so so back in sort of march it was probably beginning of april time we, we changed like i said all our processes um and we even got the cabinet office in may we supported them with some media um videos so we did some, some tweets and things like that some with on our covid cleaning practices yeah because we we'd put all these practices in place and we had people working safely and things like that you know we had you know the the mic months you know they're like things like they're purchased only on a rental you know because that's you know it's absorbent things like that you know we we developed a 10-step cleaning guide which we sent out to all our customers you know it went in boxes it went out on social media it was east shots everywhere we could go with you know our 10 step cleaning guide and the fact that soap and water is the best product you can use yeah. for breaking down covid so you know that sort of thing as well educating our customers on how to clean it, their equipment um, and then when they come back into us offering hygiene packs hygiene services 
And then when they we're doing that, we are like you say, bagging them, sealing them, and they know you know there's a QA stick on them. They know who's done it. We can trace back who's done it in case there's a problem. So our, our quality management um, practices had to be adapted. So we've put um, all of that in place for our clients, and then also for our own staff. You know, we've got our own staff goods in, in equipment. So you know, making sure they've got the PPE. We had masks and um, sanitizing stations to be honest before we locked down we had yeah. some of this stuff so because you could already see where that there was a we're risk going, yeah. we needed to protect people um, and we have monthly because i think as society learns about the disease um, and, the, and the infection we start to learn what safety measures do we need to put in place so our health and safety reviews are carried you know initially they were every one to two weeks they're probably now monthly but you know it's depending on on the news that comes out and and the um the research that's done so so we're doing that and we have changed i mean almost like i say every two weeks once a month there was a new health and safety measure being put in place rightly so because it was there to protect everybody it's been amazing isn't it huh? yeah and and so as a result as a result of that um, so you've got your, you've got your Minerva Ajax, is it or Ajax? Yeah, yeah, we got Minerva Ajax. Yeah. Um, so, so all of those covers, you'd have yeah. to change, and or you put a cover, a filter over those covers. You can put coffee covers, um, and you know we, we made sure that we have plenty of stock of all those sort of cons consumable type items that you know people are going to need lots of. So, so we got the coffee covers and the mic covers. Um, so they're all changeable um, and can be washed. And if you wash them at the right temperature, you know, it's not wasteful either. That's another important it's factor. Cost, cost effective, yeah. Yeah, yeah cost effective and also environmentally sustainable as well. You know, it's not... Yeah, important, important, especially now. Yeah. We have a lot of waste in the last sort of year or, or so, with the last eight, like say eight months. And, and, you know, we have to start thinking about protecting ourselves, but with sustainable... Yeah. Solutions. Um, so that's quite important as well, I think. 100%. And then you've got the TIGAR pushback system. So that's the one with the little. Sort oh, the, the Tiger. Yeah. So that the. the that um, you called it Tiger. Yeah. The Tiger system. So the ter turnaround system. So yeah. well, initially it was the, uh, the idea was born around turnaround efficiencies, really. Um, but I think given the current climate, there's definitely, you know, when, we, when we're there and able to start supporting our clients again an opportunity for the social distancing need that that's needed um so it'll give you that that space you know and the efficiency that we could already see when you have i think i looked at some report when i was looking at this opportunity and i think they said you know comms can improve turnaround efficiency by three percent or so between three yeah. and nine percent or something like that yeah. if you have effective comms so you know that that's quite a lot of of efficiency time that we can add plus like you say the social distancing and all the other measures that it now adds benefit to oh no 100 100 now and and any any if it, any efficiency is is so important because it's all about time and speed mm -hmm. now your your helios tug system okay yeah. so the hand mic yeah yeah now what happens there when you know people are using the hand mic I take it you've also given like hygiene packs for that to be cleaned and yeah. on how that works. Yeah, or you could, um, you know, you've you've got the fist mic, but again, you know, if, and this is solutions we can create. You know, we can have different mic types. You could have something that could sit on the tug that you don't even need to touch or that you can just replace a mic cover. So yeah. we can adapt all of our systems to meet whatever the need is really. Um, but you would, if you have a, a Helios with a, a fist mic, you know, just like you say, sanitizing it um, for the next user and that sort of thing, that, yeah. that would all be included. In yeah, the it's amazing. It's amazing how much, you know, things that everybody took for granted. It, it's changed all our lives now, hasn't it? So I think that, you know, the main thing moving forward is we've got to learn to live with it rather yeah. than wait for a solution for it, because the quicker yeah. we get it, the better the better everybody's going to be. I definitely think, I definitely agree with that. Personally, I think it's learning and finding a way to live with the disease. It's, it's 
finding a way that we all, we can all still go about business the same way and I know our lives how do we live with it and um, with the freedom that we need and yeah. we should have as a society it's finding collectively we've all got to come together I think yeah and well, yeah find... one, one big push to get us through to next spring summer That's because it. then yeah. hopefully with with the you know the combination of uh, of the vaccines that are coming on and therapeutics and everything you know please God everybody will be in a much better and more That's positive it, yeah. state. Now, everybody has acronyms and terms and everything. NFF, okay, so no fault found. So yeah. what, what, what is that? What does that actually mean? No fault found. Um, well, no fault found for us in our business would be where we would get, um, you know, a product back, a headset, a piece of equipment, and we don't, we don't find a fault with it. So, you know, we do sometimes get that, and that's because... Going back to training, so back to what we were yep, talking about yep. earlier. So sometimes you find that um, users don't quite know how to use the exactly. system correctly, yep. um, that they're maybe not using all the functions in the right way, you know, the application of the product. Yeah. So, and, and we have a couple of solutions. In the first level, we've got test systems, and we have actually sold um, a couple of these this year as well. So that's been... So the services and the test system seem to be where we're still getting sort of our business in. Because yep. I think people are looking going, right, well, um, we don't want to buy more assets because somebody said that's broken. So yes, let's buy a system it. to test and make sure on the on the front line, if you like, at, at ground level, is it working or is it not? And we've got a test system that not only tests our headsets, it'll test any headset, it'll test a wired headset in any any headset and that'll tell you then if it's broke or not so that's the first thing and that's and your indaxi yeah yeah that's our indaxi yeah um and then the second is like we said going back to training and making yeah, sure yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. got you know the information there available so that people have the best start and know how to use the equipment yeah I think uh, over the years that I've been in aviation, I think there's a lot of people would love to be sending IT platforms back and saying there's major faults with them. Yeah. Always, always, always. It comes down again, like you say, to training and everything. Let me ask you something. Who comes up with the names of all your equipment? Um, that would be my dad. Yeah. So there's got, to be, there's got to be a link somewhere. Yeah, there is some links. I think we've got some... Um, Particularly, well, we started out with Athena, which is a Greek god. So yeah. there was a little theme fall, falling along there. Then we had Apollos and Minerva. Is uh, with some Greek theme to that. But yeah, we seem to have um, yeah, some some uh, Greek and different gods who ancient yeah, gods. Yeah, 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 I'll, but, I'll, um, I'll yeah it's quite a nice little theme. It sort of works for us and sort of. We know, you know, and this is the other thing I'm educating some of our, particularly our rail market, you know, Athena, understanding that Athena denotes two user, Apollo denotes multi user. So there is a little bit of thought behind what, what the different names mean. Very good. That may, must have been a good evening that he decided to take the uh, the Greek theme, or was it a Greek holiday? <laughs> it, was probably, it was probably there on a, on a Greek island somewhere thinking. That's oh, what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Now, taking the hygiene issue so obviously you've now established additional services with your hygiene pack the managed service visits and also the the uh, additional rental fleets now you've got a bit of um, auditing background as well so you, you know all about quality programs and yeah, auditing it. how important is it for you when you see clients all the different clients those that have got a very proactive self-assessment um, platform that they they actually live by rather than people who just do things because audits are coming up yeah I mean when you when you do things just because you've got an audit coming up you're not really making any change quite uh, you know we are ISO 9001 the fundamental principle of it is improvement yeah yeah and if you're not if you're only tick boxing yeah you're not really following those principles you're not improving you know, you're not making change. So, and if you don't make change, you know, if we all stayed in the same same place, we well, the business probably wouldn't be here in 10 years time. So, you know, a lot of people see um, 
QMS systems is a bit of a pain. Yep. Just the, oh, I've got to raise an NCR or I've got to do a corrective action or I've got to do an audit. But actually, if you use them properly, you can really use them. And I use them when I have to go in and do audits to assess the business. How, what are we, you know, do we comply with standard? But while you're looking at complying with the standard, you can look at, are we, are we sustainable? Are we efficient? What can we do better? Um, are we delivering value? That's the other thing. Are we delivering value to our clients? Yeah. You should be looking at those. It's, and I think it's about intertwining the business management systems with the quality management. That's what we've done here. And that's what I would always say You know, when I, I see our clients as well. If you can intertwine those and you get the right product that you need because you're running, you're doing what's right for the business rather than just tick boxing. Yeah. And isn't it a shame that, you know, so many senior managers, they get so caught up with other pressures and they, they just focus on revenues. There isn't even a good balance between revenue and, and eventual cost. Yeah. The efficiencies and the, the benefits that could be made um, yeah. through doing it right. And and the, the one thing that always frustrates the living daylights out of me is the employees, they know exactly what's going on. Yeah. And they know everything. They know the ins and outs. The, they know, so, sorry about that. They know the ins and outs. They know the, um, you know, the problems, the benefits. They know everything. And if they see senior management only doing a tick box exercise, they lose respect for senior management. Yeah. And That's instead of having a good, you know, uh, you know, believe in it, guys, because this is why we have to do it. That's that's yeah. the best way forward. And we always have to engage with the people that are doing the job. You know, I always say to people, if you've got a process and you're not following that process ask yourself why yeah because either you're missing out or you're going to cause a problem further down the line for somebody else it might not cause you a problem or you don't need to do it so take it out of the process exactly so the you know i say to everybody ask yourself why why does that need to be done if you don't think it's necessary ask why because yeah. you'll learn something or you'll change it yeah yeah and and i think you have to talk to engage with the people that are doing the job because they know best. Yeah. They're more experts than me. hundred percent. And, and, and also, you know, so many people want to change for the sake of change. And uh, I used to use an acronym for change, which was consider how anything new generates efficiency. If yeah. it doesn't, don't do it. Yeah. But ask why, ask why somebody insists that you do something and don't be afraid of asking why, because, uh, as, as kids, as soon as you're born, that's all you do is ask yeah. why. And then you, your parents drum it out of you and then you stop asking why after Yeah, that. I have a five-year-old and he's very much into asking why at the moment. Yeah, so he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a potential family auditor. Oh, yeah, he, he wants... Oh, well, no, he wants to be the boss, apparently. Does he? Oh, good yeah. on him, eh? I said, what do you want to do when you're older? Be the boss. Is that right, yeah? Fair yeah. play to him. That's good. <laughs> um, now, as far as the transition... Um, with regards to yourself and everything. Um, I know your dad is a big rugby man and, and he used to coach and stuff. So one of the things that he would always admire is a good pair of hands, good safe hands. Yeah. So he's obviously seen a good safe pair of hands in you. Huh? Hopefully. No, I, I, think, I think most definitely. Most definitely. Now, if I was to ask you uh, and with your safe hands, what do you see as the development for the fifth, for the future you know we, we um offline we spoke about telematics but now with you know the move to autonomous yeah. practices how do you see what do you see as the future now for dbd communications i think um it, we certainly need to retain that sustainable business but it's about um creating that strong business model and also looking at innovation so we've had you know the business, you know, my dad's entrepreneurial. He's created this business from, you know, a seed from from the, the bottom up, and now it's building on that, building on those building blocks. We've got the product, we know yeah. the applications, we know the markets. Now it's how do we improve on that? How do we bring in new technologies? Yeah. So within within a, you know, how do we? I know there's a desire to support autonomy. I, I've seen that. You know, I've seen, um, I've heard that there, there is a desire to work towards this. So how do we use comms? How do we use the technology to support yeah. that? 
you know, and I, like I said before, I'm not the engineers, I don't have the solutions, but I know, you know, we have some very capable people here that, that are looking at different technologies. They already are. They come into me saying, why don't, you know, we, we're quite open here. We say, come, if you've got some ideas, throw them out there. Let's see what we can do. That's, that's what a design company does really. And, yeah. you know, we, they're coming to me saying, there's some new technology here that this would work well, you know, here, here's capability. So then I know when we get credits presented with problems, what could be the solutions? What, what could we drive the market forward with? And I think finding the next technology, you know, we've, we've had the same technology for a while and it's time to, to yeah. up version that and to change that and to create something new. Brilliant. And, and, and uh, obviously it's nice that you're so open with the fact that uh, you encourage everybody to come to you and the atmosphere yeah. seems to be good. What would you say are the unique, your, your DNA USPs of the business? Um, innovation, really. Um, problem solving and our service, our customer service. We, we pride ourselves on our customer service. And I mean, within our rail sector, we have had people call up in the past on because they work Christmas Day engineering. Yeah, yeah. We've had people phone up on Christmas Day and we've come into the office, opened up and, and give them kit because if and they're desperate, you know, that's the level of customer service. And I've had, you know, in that, you know, that might have been directors, but I've also had, you know, sales guys who've said somebody's running late, they can't come pick a bit of kit up, they need it for their works. And they've said, I'll take it home. Here's my home address. Come and get it off me at home. So that customer service, that personal touch is 100% one of our USPs and something that I would definitely retain for yeah. um, the future. And that's something that would need to stay throughout the business. I think I think with all the digitization and automization, uh, autonomous, all of these things, it's still so, so important to be able to speak to a person who cares about what they're, what they're doing and they've got a clear purpose in why they're doing what they're doing and for the company they are. And I think yeah. that's one thing that possibly and hopefully will come from all of this is people will start to appreciate that if they've got a job, it's because somebody at the top cares. Yeah. And if they care as well about what they're doing, about the assets, about you know damage or waste or just doing things right if everybody cares that little bit more there'll be an awful lot more uh, business continuity and sustainability and people won't be under so much pressure and i think that those values will start to come back and i hope you know with whether it's leadership training whether it's just basic training that they always put an element of that in because the one thing that this crisis has shown is if you don't have a good cash flow or you're not in that sustainable mode you know, you can go very quickly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely. And it's nice that, you know, so we recognise that we need to, everyone knows we need to be sustainable. But I think that that care that care that you've talked about, I think it, it, that community, even with, you know, business to business, you know, not just within your business, it's just changed the whole culture when you do business. Yeah. It's almost, even though we're, you know, we're not in person, it's more personal now. Yeah. Yeah. It feels so much more personal. You know, you talk to people and, you know, you, you, you've got that small talk back. I think I think there was just a, a focus for business, 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 like you say, revenue, income. And now there's that personal touch when you, you're sort of doing business with people. And I think my dad um, said to me, he's always said to me, people do business. Yeah, yeah. It's what he's always said, and he, and he says it to everybody. People do business. Yeah, no, but it's right, and it's it's not just it's not just old school, and it, it, it is so important. And and everybody was getting carried away with being able to access everything and look at things and find out, and and they weren't actually talking that much to each other. I I, I found it crazy sometimes. You know, you walk down a corridor, you walk down somewhere, and even if you just say good morning or how you doing or you know a lovely day or whatever yeah. you see their face light up whereas if you didn't say anything they wouldn't say anything and it's you know it's so yeah I mean I worked in my previous life in um you know corporates with hundreds of people on an office floor plate and you don't and nobody looks up to say hello and you think that's and I mean, it's so great that that's changed and I think and from my experience of talking to friends and, and other people that you know 
they are not now all doing it via sort of Zoom teams, that sort of thing. But it has changed. They, there's a complete shift in culture. And, you know, I, I know people that, you know, in large offices, they're, they're doing Zoom coffee breaks. It's, yeah. it's, and yeah. they're actually probably having more coffee breaks and more interaction than what they perhaps were when they were sitting next to each other. Yeah, no, no, true enough, true enough. And um, I think, well, we're coming to the end of it now. And I think for for your your team and your customers, um, there's an old saying, the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. And I think there's a seamless transition ahead. And, you know, all the qualities of your old man, I can see coming out in yourself. Thank you. Obviously, all the, the new and the modern ideas will be going back into the business. So, I think he's very, very pleased with what's happening, and I'm sure you are. It comes across that you care about the business, you love it, and um, yeah. those are the ingredients that bring great success. And what you have to do is, like, your old man's probably about the same age as me, so as far as Zoom was concerned, when I first heard it, I thought it was the song <laughs> from Larry's band back in 1983, so I bet he remembers that. I'll ask him. <laughs> yeah, but listen, please say hello. I will Good luck, great success, and um, we look forward to keeping in touch. And um, I've really, really enjoyed it. You've got a great, a great, um, a great level of care, and that's what's so important today. So good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and, and having the chat and allow, inviting me on today. So it's been really great. It's a pleasure. You'll have to have your logo now, Claire Cares. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad one. I'll remember that. <laughs> All right, take care, Claire. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.